Alright everyone, uh, I assume you read the title of the video so you know what this is about, but before we get started as a current railroad employee, I feel the need to mention this. Tampering with railroad property in any capacity, whether that be locomotives, rolling stock, right-of-way, switches, anything like that, is illegal, and you will land yourself in trouble in very short order if you try anything. Uh, most locomotives have cameras on them that they can see inside the cab at all times. So just don't take this information or any information in this video and do anything dumb with it. Seriously. Okay? Okay. Alright, so with all that out of the way, here we go. Door handle. And we step inside. Now you can see inside we got, in this door anyway, we've got the uh, conductor's chair and a brakeman's chair. We got the side windows. We got uh, cab lights for when it's dark. We got wipers on the front and rear facing windows. Uh, looking at the back cabinet, you can see that uh, this is for, this specific locomotive is equipped with electronic fuel injection. Uh, that's how we interface with that system. Uh, and this is all the electrical cabinet stuff. I can actually pop one of these open and you can see the absolute uh, spaghetti nightmare of wiring that it takes to actually run these things. And that big relay right there is your ground relay. That's an important protection device. We got some resistors over there for the headlights. Uh, trying to see up in there what any of that other stuff is. Can't really tell, but yeah, all these black boxes here are all relays and the wiring is what talks to other relays because uh, the Dash 2 locomotives did not come from the factory with uh, any kind of microprocessors. So we had to do all of our processing and decision making with just relays. <clears throat> so that's how you end up with all this. Uh, you can see this locomotive is equipped with motor cutouts and in this case it's inside the cabinet. Sometimes they are up there on the engine control panel. And the engine control panel has the selector switch for the headlights. This one's equipped with an auto start system. This is the auto start siren. We've got all kinds of uh, lamps up here for different faults that the locomotives have. Uh, we've got switches for the engine room platform lights, front and rear number lights. We've got a dynamic brake cutout. We've got the emergency fuel cutoff. And then we have an engine shutdown. And this engine shutdown is again related to the auto start system and this reset button is related to the electronic fuel injection system. And this here is the isolation switch and this allows the locomotive to be towed dead if you will without applying power and it also has to be in isolate in order to actually start the locomotive. And if we pop this cover open, or this door rather, you can see we've got the knife switch, we got some big fuses, this right here in my hand is a start fuse, this is a 400 amp fuse, if you ever wondered what one of those looks like. Nice and, you know, only the size of, you know, my hand. Oh uh, yeah, we got the knife switch and we got all the circuit breakers that make all the magic happen in the electrical system of one of these locomotives. And chasing faults in these can be a pain in the butt. We also have up here a, a fuse test block. That's how we test if the fuses are good. Uh, stick it across them blocks and that light right there should light up. <coughs> and if we go to the next door down in the cabinet, uh, I had mentioned in I think it was part zero that Part of what defines a dash two is having modular arrangements of circuits. And this is what those circuit modules look like. These are yeah, these are your cards. You know, you can look down here, you got VR card, DH card, 
RC, SB, performance, sensor, and so on and so forth, all the way down the line. And uh, these cards can vary from locomotive to locomotive because, you know, they're all the same. Uh, you also have down here some stuff for our load test related things. Uh, so the neat thing about locomotives, particularly uh, ones equipped with dynamic brakes, at least these older ones, many of them can actually be configured to run the power from the main gen across the dynamic brake grids. And that's actually one way we can test horsepower on these is to just run them really freaking hard loading against their own grid uh, grid resistance. Now if we open this one down here, uh, remember when I mentioned dash two switch gear and what makes it special is the motorized switch gear. This is a picture of what motorized switch gear looks like. Got interlocks over here for stuff. And we have these big bus bars and the big cables on the back. Uh, this is what sets up all the high voltage main power connections in the locomotive to the dynamic grids, attraction motors, so on and so forth. And you can see over there we have uh, some magnetic power contactors, and those are what uh, those are also involved in setting up the traction motors to get the circuits that we want. These are actually S's and P's, uh, S for series, P for parallel. And then way down in there, we have some of the gen field contactors. And there's also, kind of hard to see from here, but there's wheel slip transductors down there. We've got gen buses. Uh, there's something else I'm looking for, but I can't really see it. So, sorry. But yeah, that's all the electrical cabinet stuff. <clears throat> And then, if we come over here, uh, this is the business side, if you will, of the control stand. You can see we've got a two-way radio. We have the head-end display, which communicates with the marker on the end of the train. Uh, we have our brake gauges, and this one has digital gauges. Many locomotives still have mechanical ones. Uh, you can see it monitors your main reservoir pressure, equalizing res pressure, brake cylinder pressure, and brake pipe pressure. Uh, we'll talk more about these gauges when we get to actual air brakes, but that's what they are. And that's where they're located on the control stand. We come over here, we have a traction motor ammeter, and this tells the engineer how many amps of current are flowing through his traction motors. And that's important because if you overload them, see we have actual time ratings here. If I get closer so you guys can actually see. But we got 60 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and five minutes. And so the more current you run through that motor, the less time you're allowed to do that before the motor starts to fail. And then you can see over here we have our 26L air brakes. We have our automatic here, uh, currently in freight. And we have our independent, which is in the position to be set up and cut in. Obviously this locomotive isn't running, so it doesn't have any air on it. Uh, we have the horn. Uh, the safety control reset or the crew alerter reset which the crew alerter is this thing up here if you don't move something in the controls change the air brake pressure or something like that that thing makes a very loud very obnoxious beeping sound and it's designed to ensure that the engineer is attentive at the control stand uh, we have switches for the lead truck sand and just the general sanders we have a, this one has a toggle switch for the bell, the crossing bell. We got other toggle switches here for lights, different places on the locomotive. Uh, then this one has this little cluster of lights here. It's got a wheel slip light, PCS, which we'll talk about more in air brakes. PCS stands for pneumatic cutout switch, and that is what when you're, there's a couple things that can actuate it, but one of them being when the alerter dumps, if you do not uh, nullify the alerter, it will uh, put you into a penalty application to stop the locomotive. It's designed to prevent runaways. And that 
PCS switch opens and in order to reset it you have to do some shenanigans with the automatic to get everything to release and do what it's supposed to. Uh, you got the brake warning light for the dynamic brakes. You got a light for the bell to let you know your bell's on. Uh, one for the sanders. And we have some train line control switches over here. Uh, engine run, generator field, and control fuel pump. You have a circuit breaker, which I believe this is for the dynamic uh, regulation circuit. We have, I'm not sure off the top of my head what that button there is, to be honest with you. And then we have switches for the headlights. We got one here and one here. Uh, one's for the front, one's for the back. We have the dynamic braking handle. We have the throttle handle. And we have, hidden down here, a reverser handle. This is the key for the locomotive. And it can be stuck into the control stand. And this is how you pick your direction. Again, we have heaters over here for the engineer and you know the main heater and the sidewall heater. Uh, we also have heaters for the conductor side. There's also an emergency brake valve for the conductor. If the engineer passes out or something, and we still want to be able to stop the train. Uh, we have a fire extinguisher. We have the back side of the control stand, which if you take this cover off, there's Lots of spaghetti wiring in there. And then down in here, we have the sanitation compartment. And there's a bunch of ancillary electronic systems related to things like the event recorder. Uh, if it has traction control, that's often hidden down here. If it's equipped with PTC, that's usually down here. We have uh, valves for the sanders, just one on this one. And uh, we have the sandbox which is exactly what it sounds like. It's full of sand. And it's where we store the sand to use on the rail to get better traction. And then we also have a box here. It has fusees and some other supplies in it. And I showed you the spaghetti wiring in the back. Now if I flip you upside down here, we have the spaghetti that is the air parts underneath of the cab floor. Yeah, the joys of uh, more modern, sophisticated air brakes. And I can imagine the newer you get and the more additional features you have, the worse it even gets. We have reservoirs, plumbing, valves that are probably hidden. Can't see them because they're on the outside. <laughs> so, yeah, lots and lots of fun goodness uh, inside one of these cabs. So, that's a uh, pretty standard Dash 2 cab for you guys. Uh, most of our stuff is a similar vintage of this, so the cabs are all pretty similar. So, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and thanks again. Alright, so that's a pretty standard Dash 2 cab for you guys. Uh, this was actually a relatively uh, quick and easy video for me to make so uh, thank you guys for 10 subs and I actually would be more than willing some of the uh, videos I'd mentioned for ideas for this video in uh, from the rails up part two some of those ideas are actually still on the table if you guys want to see them uh, but yeah thanks for uh, 10 subscribers and uh, you guys enjoy your day